And now WJZ's Purple Connection, brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. And this is Purple Connection. I'm Alex Glaze, joined by Rick Ritter. We have a packed show coming up for you tonight. Well, you know what we're going to talk about first, right? We've got to talk about the big topics, and it starts with Derrick Henry. The King, incredible performance. The Ravens defense also looked lights out last night. We've got to look ahead to the Ravens' first division game that is set for next Sunday against Cincinnati. Yeah, and we have some special guests joining us tonight. I have Tim Barbalis of 105.7 The Fan and Jonas Schaefer of the Baltimore Banner joining us later. But let's get right to it and start with the statement win for the Ravens. Darkness falls. I mean, the bank was just rocking last night. Yeah, Derrick Henry just nearly 200 yards rushing, two total touchdowns, 87-yard TD run. That is the longest play from scrimmage in Ravens history. Lamar on the offense, rolling early, Alex. Three TDs on the, each of the first three drives. Not something we've seen lately. I think this is what Ravens fans have kind of been waiting to see, right? Derrick Henry just kind of build off that Cowboys performance, and then the offense just continued to roll. Todd Munkin mixing it up with a bit. I mean, it seemed like he had the Bills just kind of in the spin cycle there. And the defense also lights out. Kyle Van Noy, another incredible game. I mean, he's almost like... Benjamin Button a little bit. I'll get to that a little bit later. But another multi-sack game performance. The pass rush, relentless all night. Aside from that one deep ball, just an incredible performance. The Ravens get the win 35-10. to A huge win for the Ravens, who are now 2-2 two and two on the season. And the Ravens enjoying the win, but also providing some perspective. It's been fun. You know, um, you know we didn't start the way we wanted to. But, you know, I... Like I told those guys, this is why I came here, because of culture. You know, our back is against the wall on two. We just kept believing, we kept fighting, and now we're back where we want to be. And let's just keep building on this momentum, building on this momentum on all three phases. We didn't win a Super Bowl today, so we got to come out. Um, Bengals next week, division game, um, going on the road, a uh, big win for us uh, today. But, you know, we got to move forward to next week, and it's only week four, and we're trying to get to what um, we need to get to, we didn't get to last year. So we got a long road ahead of us, but I think we're on a good path. And joining us now on the desk, we got Tim Barbalis of 105.7 The Fan. Tim, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Absolutely. Guys, I mean, let's just start. <laughs> it, just a huge statement win for the Ravens. It seems like so long ago, everyone just was, was so down about this team. 0-2. <laughs> oh now it feels like, I mean, it's Super Bowl parade back on. I mean, it's a week-to-week -week league, right? And it was a massive statement win last night at m t Bank Stadium because the Bills came into that game. A lot of people thought that they were the best team in football, the highest-scoring offense in football, and the Ravens' first offensive play. I mean, 87 yards to the house, three straight touchdown drives for the Ravens to start the game. And they were able to overcome some stumbles in the second half. The offense had back-to-back -back three and outs. Bills had that long pass to Khalil Shakir, but they were able to steady themselves. And the offense, back-to-back -back touchdown drives to put it away. I think that's what you have to be most excited about here. You look back all the way to the Raiders game. It was the second half of that Raiders game where that offensive line really started to click. And it takes some time for an offensive unit to gel when you have so many new faces. We were all quick to jump the gun this offseason in terms of saying they didn't make enough improvements on the offensive yep. line. Kudos to them for getting it together. This unit rolling as good as anybody in the league right now. And they are best when Lamar Jackson is a complimentary player and doesn't have to be the guy throwing the ball 30, 35 times a game. Absolutely. And we're, we're going to talk more about the offensive line and the blocking later on in the show. But, guys, just Derrick Henry does it again. I mean, 151 yards on the ground in Dallas. And, and just when you think it can't get any better, 199 yards and two total touchdowns. They wanted to get him two rushing touchdowns. They wanted to get him 200 yards. It just didn't, didn't happen that way. But, I mean, just what can you say about this acquisition of Derrick Henry? This is almost like this is what you expected when they make that signing, right, for, for this offense yeah. to look like this. This is why you bring him in. I mean, 480 yards on the ground, averaging six yards per carry. And, guys, he's a Madden created player. I mean, it, he has over 2,000 carries in his career age 30, and he's still able to pull away from guys in the secondary. I mean, he it just gets stronger as the games go on. And with that offensive line that you were mentioning, Rick, they were without Andrew Voorhees last night, kicking Patrick McCarry inside. Roger Rosengarten played the entire game at right tackle. Derrick Henry was getting over five yards before contact yesterday, and that's kudos to the offensive line. Absolutely. Rick, Rick you know, I, I want to bring this up. First of all, I'll start with this. Todd Munkin called an incredible game, right? Let's start there. But also, it seems so crazy that a couple of weeks ago, for, and all offseason, we're like, what is the identity of this Ravens team? Right. When, I mean, all along, who have the Ravens been forever? Just run the ball, play defense, and what do we see last night in the most dominant performance so far this season? What do they do well? 
ran the ball, and played defense. This is the way the offense is supposed to look, right? You talk to any offensive lineman, it takes time to gel, and I keep going back to that because you need to know that the guy that's sitting next to you knows where he's lining up, knows what he's doing. And when you have new guys in there, it's just it's not going to gel right away. But we're seeing it now. I like where they're headed. And at 30 years old, let, let, let's put this out there. You're not supposed to do this no. as a 30-year-old running back, okay? But you mentioned late in the game, where's the team down? You look in the fourth quarter and you watch that film, Buffalo wanted nothing to do right. with tackling Derrick Henry. And you wear down the opposing defense like that, it is scary. And then you can switch it up with Lamar and Justice Hill as a great change of pace back. Love the identity of this offense right now. You guys, how, what, what is the ceiling for this offense, you think? Because I think right now we've seen back-to-back -back weeks what they can do. Uh, this Bills game, probably the most complete game so far this season that we've seen them put together. But now, you know, the tape's out there. Defenses are going to try to find ways to scheme up and slow this down. Just what is the ceiling, you think, for, for this Ravens offense? I think their potential is immense right now. And John Harbaugh, he's talked about multiple times early on this year how it's a different guy each week. A lot of people are saying, oh, where's Mark Andrews? He hasn't had catches in back-to-back -back weeks. But they haven't needed Mark Andrews in this. And, Rick, you were mentioning it. Lamar Jackson, 18 pass attempts, but – he was efficient, and it was the same thing the prior week against Dallas. They're making the most of the pass attempts, and they're converting on third downs, keeping drives alive. You know what's interesting about that? You're asking where's Mark Andrews, but if you watch last night's game closely, you see Andrews and you see Isaiah Likely leading the way with those massive blocks yeah. for Henry, for Justice Hill, for Lamar, and that Lamar touchdown, I mean, you had likely clear out DeMar Hamlin for about 10 yards. You know, and let's just, not forget the knock on likely coming out of college was that he couldn't block. Yeah. I can't say enough about number 80, and you nailed it. He had a couple, multiple, I would say at least three big-time blocks last night uh, that were game-changing in many ways in terms of how they related to Derrick Henry's run. You also mentioned what is the, the limit for this offense. I think what you saw last night from the Ravens, that is peak Ravens football right there. If every game could go that way, they'd be in great shape. Playing devil's advocate, I think that when they get down, how do they respond to that? How do they respond with their passing attack? But you want to control the game from the first whistle on the offensive side, and that's the way you do it with Derrick Henry. Uh, final thoughts for you guys just on this game before we, before we move on. What's next for, for this team? I mean, we have the Cincinnati Bengals up next. I mean, I, you mentioned this is a week-to-week -week league. Just can they keep this going? I mean, just, you know, a couple weeks ago we're talking about, you know, it seemed like the sky was falling with, with an 0-2 start. Now the, the Ravens can do no wrong. Well, now you're just looking to build off what was your most complete game of the season, where Dallas, it was three really, really good quarters, and then the fourth quarter happened, and the defense kind of collapsed. The offense was going three and outs there, where now it's building off a game in which you dominated from start to finish, and you have an opportunity to really put the Bengals' season on life support. I mean, if they start the season one and four, the odds of them making the playoffs are not good at all. Absolutely. All right. Well, Tim is going to join us again uh, at the end of the show. Uh, but right now we're going to look when we look forward to that Bengals game, we're going to do that uh, toward the end. But coming up next, we have plenty more Purple Connection. Jonas Schaefer of the Baltimore Banner going to join us next as we continue. Stay with us. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. And welcome back to Purple Connection. I'm Alex Glaze. He's Rick Ritter. And we got a special guest joining us now. We got Jonas Schaefer of the Baltimore Banner. Jonas, thank you for taking some time and joining us. Of course, guys. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right. Well, Derrick Henry is what everybody's talking about today. But it's the big guys up front that opened up those holes and made Henry's job a lot easier last night. I talked with Ronnie Stanley and Patrick Ricard about the thankless job of blocking and the pride that his teammates, or that Derrick Henry's teammates take in that blocking. But Jonas, you've been in the locker room, you've been talking to these guys, just for these skill position guys that are used to catching balls and putting up those gaudy numbers, just are, how are they feeling about taking on this role that is, is so thankless and a lot of people just not really paying attention to? You know, uh, it might be thankless among Ravens fans, but if you're around Derrick Henry enough, he makes sure to give these guys a lot of props. There, there is a lot of gratitude coming from his way, coming from Lamar's way. Uh, they make sure to to acknowledge who's doing the dirty work up front. And, you know, as you said, Alex, it's not just the, the big beefy dudes, uh, you know, from left tackle to right tackle. It's the tight sure. ends. It's Patrick Ricard. It's the wide receivers. You know, you look at that, uh, that Lamar Jackson touchdown run from last night. He wasn't touched at all as he, you know, went outside and basically got a valet service from the pocket to the to the corner of the end zone. Mark Andrews blocking for him. 
Isaiah likely blocking for him, Rashad Bateman even clearing that path. So uh, I think there is very much an everyone eats kind of philosophy when it comes to the run game. What's good for the goose? What's good for the gander? And you know, when you clear a path for Derrick Henry, like the Ravens did last night, so many untouched runs, you know, beyond five, ten yards. He's going to have these kind of incredible, memorable nights. Absolutely. All right. Well, here's the real reason we brought you on tonight, Jonas. We got we got a game. We do. What's the word? I have high Alex expectations. Alex likes the games, Jonas. If you haven't noticed, I have high expectations for you as as the wordsmith you are. So we're going to fill in the blank. I'm going to read a statement. You fill in the blank uh, with the word. And Rick, I guess also start with you. The Ravens win over the Bills last night. Is what? Dominant. But my word that I'm going to pick here is notice because it puts the entire league on notice that they are. Getting into a rhythm now, this is what they can do when they're clicking on all cylinders. And they can play not as good, better than any team in the league when they're clicking like they were last night. Okay. Jonas, what do you have? Uh, we, got, we got notice. The Ravens win against the Bills was what? Yeah, I was also going to go with dominant, but that's a little bit too boring. So let's go with affirming. Uh, this, this kind of rubber stamps their credentials that I think we all thought this team had coming into the season. We all were considering the Ravens as a potential Super Bowl contender. That loss to the Raiders shook things up a bit. That fourth quarter against the Dallas Cowboys uh, was was not all that encouraging, but for the Ravens to go out and just smack around a team that a lot of teams, that a lot of people were talking about as this potential best team in the AFC, do it on prime time, do it with a couple guys banged up, really, really important and showing everybody just how good they can be. Absolutely. All right, Jonas, I'm going to throw it right back to you. This is the play everyone's talking about, that 87-yard touchdown run, but Derrick Henry at 251 pounds hit 21.3 miles per hour. It is blank that Derrick Henry reached a top speed of 21.3 miles per hour during that 87-yard run. What do you got for me? For me, it's breathtaking uh, because, exactly to your point, Alex, just considering how big he is, one of the few guys faster than him uh, this week, you know, the NFL keeps track of these guys' tracking data. They know just how fast they're running, and one of the few guys faster than him as a ball carrier was uh, worthy in, in Kansas City, and he was just like a tenth or tenth or two second faster than Derrick Henry. And Xavier Worthy is about sixty pounds light, lighter, <laughs> seventy pounds lighter. So for those guys to have roughly equivalent speed, despite having totally opposite body types, is just a testament to how much of a physical freak, how much of an anomaly Derrick Henry is in every sense of the word athlete. I was going to go with unfair, but, uh, you know, that, that, <laughs> that, 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 that works one. too. What do you, you got, Rick? Uh, I, I want to go to the next one because I'm going to save my good work. All right, there, there we go. All right, Kyle Van Noy is another guy that, you know, kind of uh, was flying under the radar, maybe heading into last season yeah. and nine and a half sacks, you know, but now just off to just an incredible start so far this season. His third straight multi-sack game. Rick, it, Kyle Van Noy having three straight multi-sack games is what? Ageless. At 33 years old, and he's still able to do this. I'm going to be honest. I was one of the ones to say that going into the season, I didn't think they had enough firepower on this defensive line. And I'm not sure that they quite had the depth. I like that they added Nguakwe now. Uh, I think that's a great addition there in terms of having some extra bodies. But Van Noy and Adafi Owe and what they've been able to do in terms of wreaking havoc against the quarterback, it is beyond impressive. And Kyle Van Noy playing with the injury that he's playing with and doing this, he is ageless. Absolutely. I was, I, I mean, some funny say that I was going to do a hyphenated word and go Benjamin Button like. So I, that's I, good there. Yeah, I like that. So, that. Jonas, what do, what do you got for us on Kyle Van Noy? Were, were you reading my, reading my notes or something, oh. Alex? I was going to go with Benjamin Button. I was going to go outside <laughs> the dictionary. Benjamin Button, you know, Kyle Van Noy, age 33, since 2021, only six players in their age 33 season or later have recorded at least nine sacks. He's basically 60% of the way there. So, for him to do this at this age, um, you know, he's talked about how the opportunity to focus fully on his pass rush and not worry about being an off-ball linebacker could really help him. And I think we're starting to see that. He, he just has looked unblockable for stretches against really, really good pass protectors. Awesome. And Jonas, I'm going to get you out of here on this because you were, you were at the game last night in the locker room um, after that win. What is, what is something that stood out to you uh, after this big win? I mean, we, we've been in the locker room. We've been around these guys. What stood out to you? after that statement win last night? I think probably just how, how good the, the defense is feeling after a couple of rough weeks. You know, this is a defense that is going to play football, I think, a little bit differently than it did last year under under Mike McDonald. I think they have more of the horses in, in the secondary to play a little bit more man-to-man coverage. And, you know, Josh Allen was not a quarterback that you would typically want to man up because he's such a scrambling threat and he's got such a strong arm. But the Ravens did a really, really good job mixing up their coverages. Darren 
those Bills receivers to beat them in mid coverage. And for the most part, they couldn't. And I think that's a really, really good sign for the Ravens as they move forward. Awesome. He's Jonas Shea for the Baltimore Banner. Jonas, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks, guys. See you soon. All right. We have more Purple Connection coming up. Stay with us. We'll be right back. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. And welcome back to Purple Connection. All right, it's time for the league checkup. We take a look around the league. We're talking about the Ravens win enough for a little bit. Let's take a little break. And listen, I threw our producer Danny a little bone here. Oh, he's going to be happy with that. Thing. I know where you're going. Uh, you know, let's start with the Commanders. They beat the Cardinals 42-14. I mean, the Commanders are legit. They got a quarterback. Jaden Daniels, the real deal. He is the future, and it is bright future for Commanders fans. All right, well, people can read what's on the screen, but I want to talk to you about something. Oh, don't even. I want to talk up. to you about Come something. On. Danny, if we, could, if we could roll this. Uh, you know, this was not in the, in the script tonight. But secret, yeah. We're doing secret VOs now. What oh is going on with your Eagles? You know, we have all the time in the world to sit here and talk <laughs> about this. Just what's going on? I mean, just what's going through your mind Sunday afternoon when you're – you're watching your team. Look, you know I'm a realist, okay? The mistakes that they're making, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Jalen Hurts does not look like the same quarterback to his defense. He is missing his number one and number two wide receiver. You take your one and two wide receiver out of any offense. I don't care what offense it is. It's going to look entirely different. And when you're not moving the ball, your defense can't get off the field. It was a recipe for disaster on Sunday. I'm holding my final thoughts until after the bye. I want to see how they do after the bye and they get healthy. I think they're going to get back on track. If they don't, though... Heads will be rolling in Philadelphia, right, well, and it's going to be more than just that guy. I was going to say, you're talking about Jalen Hurts a lot. What do you think about Nick Sirianni on the hot seat? Or? He is absolutely on the hot seat. There may be nobody more on the hot seat than Nick Sirianni in Philadelphia right now. All right, all right. Well, back to the league. Thanks for taking it easy <laughs> on me, too. Thank you. Yeah, we had, we had to do that to you. But also, the, what's interesting, too, you had the Steelers no longer undefeated. Joe Flacco leading the Colts. What a weekend for Ravens fans, right? Joe Flacco. I mean, if there's one thing Flacco knows how to do, it's coming back and beat, the, and beat the Steelers, right? I like it. I think Miami should have called Indianapolis and said, hey, we'll give you a third-round pick for Joe Flacco because he would have brought them right to the postseason. There we go. All right. Well, we have more Purple Connection coming up after the break. We're going to wrap this thing up and look forward to the Ravens' next game against the Bengals. Stay with us. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. WJZ's Purple Connection brought to you by LifeBridge Health. Care bravely. And welcome back to Purple Connection. We're going to welcome back in our special guest, Tim. Thank you for, for joining us. Of course, guys. All right, and let's wrap this thing up and, and look forward now to, to next Sunday against the Bengals. Just this is a Bengals team that, that still is concerning to me, right? Because they're still the Bengals. They still have Joe Burrow, one of the better quarterbacks. Um, in the league, they still have Jamar Chase out there, T. Higgins. I know they haven't looked what we're used like what we're used to seeing from the Bengals. I think they're going to figure it out. They're still a team that kind of kind of scares me. How do you feel about the Bengals? Look, they're one and three. They dug themselves into an early hole, but they are still dangerous because of everything that you're saying. And Joe Burrow's still healthy. We know that offense has firepower. We saw Jamar Chase get that really long touchdown against the Panthers. But right now, it's that defense that has really been struggling for Cincinnati. Chuba Hubbard, he went for over 100. <laughs> and they're one of the worst uh, rushing defenses in football. So I'm sure Derrick Henry... Licking his chops, seeing that. Absolutely, and, but we've seen kind of similar to the Ravens' defense, right? Kind of some struggles during the first couple of weeks. There's the, the chance that they can figure this out, Rick. Absolutely, and they got guys there on the back end and on that defensive unit who have been there before in big-time situations. They know how to play in playoff mode, if you will, if they make it that far. This is a team that notoriously has started out slow the past three seasons, so we know that they can turn it around. And you mentioned the offensive firepower. I think it's going to be a great divisional matchup. I think it's going to be a tough game. I think for anybody thinking that the Ravens go in there and blow the doors off of them, I think this is a lot closer. Do you guys like the fact that last night, after the big win, right, everyone – is kind of tempering the the excitement and just saying, hey, we didn't win the Super Bowl. On to, we're going to enjoy this, but then it's on to Cincinnati. Do you like hearing that from the team that they're not? It's just a win, and like you mentioned earlier in the show, it's just a week-to-week -week league. Oh, it's a massive win for them, but it's a win in week four. You right. didn't win a Super Bowl, like Kyle Hamilton said, and we know that this team has aspirations of playing in February, and this is a big part of it. This is their first divisional game of the season against Cincinnati, and, and again, if you can come out of that game with a win, you really jeopardize the Bengals' 
uh, chances at making the playoffs, which being a division rival, that's all you want. And you also <laughs> set yourself up for more success as you watch what happened last night with the Steelers. Justin Fields kind of looks like he's kind of coming back down to earth a little bit, and everything's kind of starting to level out when it comes to the division. A win in the division would do so so much for this team. It will do so much, and I really want to jump back to your first question because I think it's a great question, and I think it's something that's often overlooked here. You mentioned that this team has so many different ways to win a ball game and that it's been different guys on a week-to-week -week basis. It's not that easy just to have a group of guys on the offensive side to buy into that. Torrey Smith says it all the time. We're going to talk to Isaiah likely about it. The fact that you have selfless guys in there who don't care about who's getting the ball, a la Mark Andrews, who's put his ego to the side, right. and all they're worried about is winning – those are the teams that are sticking around a long time come January. And, Rick, to your point, I mean, think of all of the talented pass catchers that the Ravens have. And you mentioned yeah. Isaiah Likely. When he got drafted, he was not known for his blocking. And he's been putting on a blocking cl clinic on the perimeter. Him and Mark Andrews and Zay Flowers, the receivers as well, Aguilar, all of them you can lump in. And you know what? It's, it's one thing to say it, but if you go back and you watch that 87-yard touchdown, Two of the guys that were right there, some of the first guys to celebrate with Derrick Henry, probably because they're also the ones that could get down there the <laughs> fastest and, and uh, catch them, Zay Flowers yeah. and Rashad Bateman, two guys that just looked so excited to start the game with that, with that big play. I'm telling you, as a receiver, and again, to jump back to what Torrey says, because he says it all the time, I know it was like this for me in college, when you are in a running system like that as a receiver, it is a lot to buy in, and you have to buy into the team mentality. And I just can't say enough about this locker room, the type of guys that they have. And camaraderie is, is overlooked sometimes in this league, but it is so important, and this team is close-knit. You a blocker? I was. I would know. About 30 pounds heavier then. <laughs> All right. Well, of course, you can watch that first division game with the Ravens and the Bengals right here on WJZ kickoff set for 1 p.m. But we are going to start your football Sunday way, way, way before that with Always. our purple, purple pregame show. Um, got Kadri Ismail joining me in studio every Sunday. We get you ready for kickoff. Uh, with purple pregame. Feel, uh, true Ravens fan. Look at the smile on his face over here. <laughs> no, 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 good no. Right but, now. but listen, you know how it is. I mean, listen, Ravens fan, the only team that can hurt me. We don't care about the regular season. It's all about the postseason. But, you know, start 0-2, it's kind of like, uh, you yeah. kind of got to worry about the regular season a little bit here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, we know the stat where it's less than 10% of the teams that start 0-2 make the playoffs. Now you're back to 500. And after this week, hopefully you get above that. Absolutely. All right. Well, for uh, Rick Ritter, I'm Alex Glaze. Thank you for joining us. We will be back next week. Big win for the Ravens. Hopefully getting thing back, things back on the right track as this team Looks to uh, get back in uh, playoff contention, guys. That's what we're hoping. We'll see you tonight at 11 o'clock. Catch Tim on 105.7 The Fan this week.